Profession Computer here, guys. I appreciate all the comments on our Facebook and our social media stuff. What is going on, guys? Team Heart Patrol in the house. Keep them coming. We've got 102 on. Conroe, Texas here. Keep them flying, guys. I really appreciate you guys logging on. All right. A Kiwi and an Aussie here. Sweet. Mount Ida here. Who is that? All right. Hey, that's Ron. All right, Ron, you're on. Ron, I'm going to give you some fishing tips, so make, take some notes here on this deal. I'm back home finally. Drove from Hot Springs to Clewiston, Florida. Took about 19 hours with the Trocar Battle Wagon, so pretty sweet deal. Let's see who else is on here. Z New Zealand. What's up, New Zealand? We're going to give you some fishing tips today. Dallas, Texas, Missouri, Indianapolis. We've got everybody jumping on. Keep them coming, guys. Heart Patrol. We did, a little, we did one last night. It was so much fun. My wife's birthday was last night. And we had a little Hank, or a little dog. Uh, my, actually, my brother-in-law's little dog. And uh, so we did hearts for Hank. So we're still doing hearts. Team Heart Patrol, keep them rolling. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. So let's jump into our Instagram page here. Talk a little bit about some of these fishing questions that you guys... Let's see here. When targeting... Okay, this is going to be from Northwest Bassin. Is Northwest Bassin on? Are you guys here, Northwest Bassin? Shout out to him. He's on Instagram, Northwest Bassin. When targeting suspended fish, what do you take into consideration when select bait size and weight? Do you also count the bait down to a specific depth or just start your retrieve right when the bait hits the water? That is an awesome question because that is the whole reason I did good in this Forestwood Cup at Lake Washita. Yes, you pay attention to the bait size. If the fish are feeding on small little shad, you're going to want to fish small little swim baits or small little baits, small little trailers, uh, for sure. And if the fish are feeding on bigger baits, you can go with, obviously, bigger baits. No problem. As far as counting them down, that is very, very important. Uh, and that was the key to my success. And I gave a tip on that, actually. So, for example, here is a, this is a fish head dude. It's like a little uh, scrounger head. It's got a little swim bait on the back of it. This bait right here is half ounce, and here's what I would do. Every bait has a different fall rate. Keep the hearts coming, guys. Loving the heart patrol. Every bait, this bait has a different fall rate than the fish head spin half ounce or a quarter ounce jig head, whatever it may be. Even line size dictates your fall rate. So what I do, this is a, this is a seven and a half foot rod. I'll take 10 foot line off and drop the bait in the water and basically watch the bait go down and count one, two, three, four, five. And a lot of times on a half ounce bait, for example, like my fish head, in five seconds, it would fall 10 foot deep. So when I would watch my graph, okay, those fish aren't bu actively busting on the surface for a little bit. I would watch my graph and see what depth the bait is at and see what depth I'm starting to see those blobs on the screen. Then I would say, okay, the I think the fish are 20 feet deep. So if this bait falls five or 10 feet every five seconds, that means I need to count to 10. So I'd cast my fish head spin out and I'd count to 10. I know that that's getting that bait down close to 20 foot deep and I would reel it very slow back. If you reel fast on the way back, it's gonna then lift your bait up too much. You wanna keep a very slow retrieve. Keep the hearts coming, guys. Oh man, it looks like a volcano of hearts right there. That is crazy. Tapping away. I appreciate all that, man. You guys have been doing an awesome job. I, I want to hit 300,000 hearts by the end of this week. Keep them coming. Keep them blasting. And if you're watching this in replay, just sit there and go crazy with it, guys. We're going to do some fun stuff. We'll get to 300,000 and 500,000. We're going to do all kind of cool stuff. But, yes, counting the bait down is very important and picking the right size bait. So whether it's a little 3-inch swim bait, whether it's a 4-inch swim bait, whatever it may be, pick the right size. Very, very, very important. So that's a great question, Northwest Bassin. Appreciate that. All right, let's jump into another one. All right, let's go... Grizzly Bear fit Grizzly Bear 56. You on there, Grizzly Bear? Grizzly Bear 56 on Instagram. Check him out. Pretty cool dude. Got a great question for me, Grizzly Bear 56. What technique do you use in the summer when the bass are suspended 15 or 20 feet of water over in water over 30 to 40 foot of water? Great question. And it's exactly what I did at the Forcewood Cup. Again, the fish head dude works great. A fish head spin works great. Okay? Or even just a standard swim bait. You know, taking a standard, like I was taking a little tight lines UV swim bait right here. 
putting on a quarter ounce jig head and counting it down to 20 feet deep and rolling it back through there as well. So when those fish are suspended in 15 to 20 feet deep, over 30 or 40 foot of water, just count your bait down. Get a small swim bait, get a, get a small uh, fish head spin, and get it down there. 10 pound line, eight pound line. You don't wanna go with heavy line. That's a big tip for you guys. Don't fish with heavy line uh, on those deep fish like that because it doesn't allow your bait to stay at the proper depth. The heavy line will basically lift your bait up so as you're retrieving it back through the water, it's wanting to, uh, it's wanting to lift up. So basically that's it. So that's a great question. Let's jump over to Facebook. Thank you for that question. Grizzly Bear 56, let's jump over to Facebook. By the way, guys, we're almost to 100,000 uh, on Facebook. We're going to be doing some cool stuff. Check this out. We're going to be giving away some T-shirts, some Team Martin T-shirts, guys. Who wants some of these? Come on. 100,000 on Facebook. We're going to be giving away, we're going to be giving away tons of cool T-shirts and some hats. All right. You want one, guys? All right. Get on Facebook if you're not following me already, and uh, and share this Periscope with your friends. Let's get this thing big. We're at a little over a thousand followers right now. I, I want to have fifty thousand followers. I think this is so cool. Share it with your buddies. Let them know to follow the Scott Martin Challenge. We're gonna have cool things, and I'll tell you what else we're gonna do. And you'll want to be on our Periscope when we film the SMC. Okay, we're gonna do Periscopes while we're fishing. So you're gonna see behind the scenes of the SMC while we're filming, while we're actually out there catching fish. And, uh, and it's gonna be awesome. You did 3,000 hearts in your last videos. Dude, that's pretty good, guys. That is awesome. That is really awesome. All right, let's jump into, thank you so much for that. Keep the hearts coming. Look how they're blowing up like crazy. Team Heart Patrol in the house. All right, let's see what we can, what we find here. All right. All right, so here's a question from Scott Jarwowski. Okay, and he says, Hi, Scott. Referencing to the point that I fished on the Forestwood Cup, this, this was a point that I caught a lot of schooling fish. Referencing back to that point, what was so special about it? Was there current or structure holding the fish there? Why were they holding there and what was going on? Great question, and, and it was a special spot. Number one, it was a trough. And what is a trough? A trough is is some shallower water with deep water in, inside that troughs down like a ditch, okay, and it funnels. It starts out wide and it slowly funnels into a narrower little passage, and that's what that was. It had two islands, two submerged big points coming out, and it started wide, 40, 50, 60 foot deep, and it funneled down to a saddle in between two islands. And what that did is it allowed those those uh, the bait fish to kind of get into that little trough right there and kind of migrate around in big circles. There was a lot of suspended suspended uh, fish around the trees. There was brush piles on the bottom, and uh, and and of course it was just a great feeding opportunity. As the wind would blow, it would push those fish through that trough, and uh, and those fish would would really get good uh, in there. And that was really the key to that whole thing. Uh, was the trough, and it had submerged trees out in the 50, 60 foot range, as well as it had a nice drop off with brush piles on top of that. Keep the hearts coming, guys. Who said uh, Garcia's on fire? I just saw that pop up. Was that bottom line, Mike? Who was that, Ricky? Garcia's on fire, guys. We need to get after it. That's what I'm talking about. Who was it? Bottom line, Mike. What's up? What's up, dude? All right, Garcia's on fire. That's what I like to hear, dude. We need to go do a show there. What do you think? Little, little, uh, what, what you think? What you think, Mikey? What you think? Come on, man. Boom, 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 pow! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Ricky doesn't know anything about that, does he? All right, so let's go to another question here. Uh, need some advice. This is from Bobby Light on Facebook. Bobby Light on Facebook said, need some advice on fishing off color to muddy water. I fish Lake Livingston in Texas most of the time, and he cannot seem to put a pattern together. So Bobby Light, the answer to that is, Yes, muddy water. Typically in muddy water, fish stay much shallower than they do in clear water. Like Washita is a very clear lake, so in the summertime, they seem to gravitate out to open water and they get out a little deeper. But in a muddy lake, they're going to stay close to the shoreline. They're going to stay close to, to, to visible cover, logs, whatever it may be, docks, etc., and some of the shallower ledges. They don't necessarily go far offshore. So color is real important. You're fishing stained or muddy water fish the right colors. I like bright colors, your chartreuse colors. You know, like your chartreuse is this is this color right here, this yellow, okay? That, I like that, chartreuse and white. 
I like colors like that in muddy water. Also, in muddy water, fish a bait that has a lot of vibration. Again, I'll show you this bait here. It's pretty cool. It's by Tight Lines. It's one of their little prototype deals they're making. It's basically like a little vibrating jig. Okay. All right. There's one in there. That's a, that's basically like a little chatterbait. Okay, I love chatterbaits. This is Tightline's UV's version of one. But this blade is going to make a lot of vibration, a lot of thumping in the water. And that's going to be real important to key in those fish in on the bait. Or you can throw a square bill crankbait. Okay, that's why square bills are good in muddy water. Because they put off a lot of uh, vibration. And those fish, when they can't quite see the bait in muddy water, yet they can feel the bait. They can feel that, that pressure change in the water. They can feel that that vibration and it keys them in on it and makes them bite keep those hearts coming guys we're going to be just keep doing this until the heart stops so keep them rolling all right now it's time to give a little shout out to my boy jacob wheeler jacob wheeler he might be on here he's always he's always snooping around you on here jake Let's see if jacob wheeler's on it see if he pops in come on jake jump on there jake i know you're on there you might be on someone else's account but i know you're watching all right what bait casters do i use Kuma, Helios, TCS reels. They're sweet. So does Jacob Wheeler. Love them, man. The TCS, the TCS reels are bad to the bone. Check out the color scheme on that. Matte black, blue accent. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Got the big oversized handles. Man, these things are awesome. All right, so here's my props to old Jay, to Jay Wizzle. That's, that's his new name. I came up with that, by the way. So if it sticks, it came from Scotty Boy. Jay Wizzle, commonly known as Jacob Wheeler. Okay, check this out, Jay, Jay Wizzle. There's your props right there, dude. That's your buzz bait. That's Jacob Wheeler's buzz bait, okay? That's a fish catcher. All right, so I caught fish on day four of the Forestwood Cup on this. Now, how I had it rigged up, you know, a lot of guys are putting other trailers on there. I basically put on, um, let's see, oh, Mark's there. What's up, Mark? What's up, Mark? I'm giving your boy some props, man. Come on. All right, Jacob Wheeler's a cool dude. Jump on his Instagram if you're not already. Give him some hearts. We're in a little race to 300,000. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Heart patrol in the house. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so that's what I'm doing with his little buzz bait. I put a little fluke on the back of it, and they chomped it. They ate it up. So there's my props to my boy right there, the Jay Wizzle. All right, what else, guys? What else? Let's do one more question, and we're going to be jumping off. I appreciate it here. All right, what is the best, this is from Chance Stone on Facebook. What is the best technique when fishing shallow, hot summer waters? And you're still the best, Scott. I appreciate that very much. Uh, best technique when fishing shallow, hot summer waters would be square bill crankbait on some of the deeper, the deepest banks you can find with cover like logs and whatnot. Wind is very important, so fish the windy sides of anything. And then num number three would be to look for any flipping cover. In a shallow, hot summertime deal, find sh the most shade you can find, whether it's a dock, okay, docks are good in the summertime, or any type of big logs, anything like that. Main lake, especially if it's influenced by the wind or any current, it's very, very important in the summertime. So, so that's, uh, that's very, very good stuff. Uh, appreciate all the comments. We're going to do, do a couple questions here for what you guys are pop popping in here. But uh, I appreciate all the Facebook posts. Again, we're close to 100,000. If you want to get on there and get some cool shirts, jump on there, guys. We're going to be giving these away at 100,000. We've got about 3,000 likes to go on that. Awesome deal. And get on our Instagram page and blow it up. And most importantly, let's blow Periscope up. Jump on. If you're not a fan of Jacob Wheeler, jump on his as well. Keep the hearts coming for both of us, guys. It's pretty awesome. So let's jump into a few questions. You guys load your questions up. Shoot them at me. And uh, let's see if I can answer a few of them, okay? All right, load it up, bam. Yes, I can post this video on YouTube and I will. All right, how do I stay confident when having a bad day? Great question. This is, the mo this is probably the best question of the whole night. Because let me tell you something, guys. As I fish around the country, three days of practice on the Philippines, I don't catch fish every day, okay? I don't catch fish all day long. There's hours and hours and hours that I don't catch them, and I don't know what's going on, and I'm trying to figure it out. But how I stay confident, and this is the secret, is I understand this, that it only takes a few minutes. There will be something that will pop up in the course of every day, whether it's a fish that you caught, whether it's a, something you notice, an idea that pops in your head. Some, something 
will pop into your brain or some opportunity will pop up that will key you in on the right thing to do, okay? I know that sounds very vague, but you have to stay positive because every tournament I've ever done well in, keep the hearts coming, guys. I'm, I'm seeing them all oh, there. There you go. There you go. Tap away, man. Now, I know Jacob Wheeler, he's got his whole, I think, the middle school. He actually got a hold of the elementary school uh, yesterday, and uh, his grandmother got her whole sewing team to rig up the sewing machines with a little apparatus on it that it does like 5,000 RPMs. So he's going to be blowing up the hearts, guys, because his grandmother, she figured out how to do that. She's got her whole sewing team on board, and I think uh, I think there's 30 or 40 of his grandmother's friends they're going to be just blowing up the heart thing. So he doesn't need hearts. He's got it all rigged up. Just, But I need the real hearts. I need the real fingers. Keep it going. But uh, but anyway, stay focused on the water. Something will pop up, and, uh, and, and, it, and it's pretty awesome stuff. So let's see what is – I lost that question there. Keep it coming. What is your favorite Alabama – I don't throw an Alabama rig, dude. I don't like Alabama rigs. I'm not a big Alabama rig guy. We can't use them on the tour, and so – how do you start fishing as a co angler on the FLW Tour? Very simple. Just sign up. Just get on FLW Outdoors, become a member, and uh, and sign up and start fishing the BFLs as a co angler, okay? Pretty awesome deal. You don't need a boat, okay? You don't need a boat. All you need is some rods and reels, and you jump on board. What is the biggest bass I have caught? 11 6 right here on Lake Okeechobee. Pretty sweet. I got an 11 6, and uh, the same day. A guy caught an 11.9. We were flipping, and it was ridiculous. We had a 40-pound day that day. Best flipping bait for Okeechobee. You just saved this periscope, my friend, because I was going to talk about something, and I almost forgot. Best flipping bait for Okeechobee. Bam, I got it right here. I have got it right here. Yeah, bruisers are awesome. I love the Bruiser Avenger, but I'm also using another bait, too. Tightline UV. We kind of made one. That is called the the punch. That's what I'm talking about, guys. There it is. Boom. Okay. In Florida, when we flip mats, everybody's putting on a punch skirt. So we put on tungsten, and then we put a punch skirt on, and then we put our favorite bait on, whether it's a beaver or a, a bruiser, avenger, or whatever it may be, or tight lines beaver. Hey, I said, you know what? Let's come out with a bait that has the skirt material, the punch skirt, already on it, okay? And the price of these things is phenomenal. So now you don't have to worry about punch skirts. Just get these baits, and they have all those extra tentacles, and it's a very popular shape and size. That's basically like your Beaver 4.0, and uh, it's got the punch material on it, okay? And so when this thing goes down through the water, it flares out, and when it hits the bottom, it flares, and then when you pull it back up to the top of the mat, it flares. Every time you stop it, it flares, and those fish can't stand it. So this is an awesome deal. Check them out. I know that uh, Tackle Warehouse is going to have them. Uh, you can also go to Thailand UV and check them out. This is a really, really cool bait. I'm excited about this one right here. And um, But good stuff, good stuff. All right, let's hit a couple more questions, and we'll be getting out of here. I've got to go cook dinner, guys. All right, question. Oh, they came in so fast. Uh, f best flipping colors. Any, you know, hey, any color will work on Lake Okeechobee. It doesn't matter as long as it's black and blue. Okay, as long as it's black and blue, that's the colors. All right, very simple. That was an easy one to answer. How do you key in on big fish? I can't read. I, too many things. If they're real long and they blow out because they're oh, keep the hearts. Oh, the hearts are killing it, dude. Jacob Wheeler, you're in trouble. I got Team Heart Patrol going bonkers here. Uh, what is the bait, best bait for heavy underwater vegetation? That's simple. I like punching, okay? That's what this is for. Love to do that. You know, at Gunnersville, Okeechobee, Rayburn, any of those lakes that have deep grass, you know, rig up a bait like this. This is, again, the tight line UV punch. Rig up a bait like this and put it on a one ounce to an ounce and a quarter tungsten, peg it, and basically... Uh, put it on a TK-130 trocar hook. That's the best flipping hook on the planet. And they've got a new HD right now. It's a heavy-duty one. And, uh, and just punch. Just cover water and punch. Just flip it out there. Let it go to the bottom. Stroke it maybe three times, and you're out. All right. Another one. Two ounce on two ounce on G-Bill. That means that grass is thick. But, yeah, that's awesome. What's for dinner? Pork chops. We had cobia last night. I don't know if you caught it. It was a lot of, a lot of cobia we had. It was really, really, really good. All right. Favorite area for flipping Okeechobee? I can't tell you that. That's my secret, man. Come on. <laughs> now, you know what? This The shoal's good. Um, 
the North Shore is really good. Those are probably my two best ba uh, places for flipping, okay? Best lures for late summer in up north Michigan. Late summer, early fall, moving baits are getting pretty good, especially when you get a windy day, a crankbait, believe it or not. Get out there in that 10, 12-foot water. If you're up there in the smallmouth, get out there and start making long cast with like a 5XD or some type of 8 to 15 foot diving crankbait and just burn it man just get out there and wing it and burn it and just cover water and uh, and that is a great 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 uh, bait to catch a lot of fish on all right prop baits thoughts you know the Brian B's is pretty good it doesn't throw all that great because it's balsa um, the devil's horse is hard to beat and believe it or not that Rapala that Rapala, uh, the one that Wheeler gave it to me again, it's that one with the little props on it, the little X-Wrap prop bait. That's pretty sweet. I like that one a lot. All right. All right, guys, listen. I got to go cook. I appreciate you jumping on. Um, show the boat. The boat, is, the boat is a mess. And you want me to show you the boat? All right, here we go. There's the boat right there. Boom. There's my rods. There's all my baits I was going to. Oh, I just saw something right here. David Rosenquist on here, guys. Come on, Impact Lures. Where's Impact Lures? Come on, David. Where you at, buddy? You there? David Rosenquist? Uh-huh. Let me show you my secret weapon for the Forestwood Cup. You ready? We're going to do Team Heart Patrol on this one. Bam. Those are lucky cookies. Lucky cookies is way better deal than the fish head spin or, or the dude or those rods. Way more important is the blessed cookies, okay? That's what it gets it done. That's the Rosenquist family. You guys rock. My blessed cookies. They were cooked, cooked special, prayed over with, with special instructions. And uh, from Addison and the whole crew there, really, really awesome. Appreciate you guys. So, Julie Keys, what's up? Hey, all right, since Julie Keys is on here, let me tell you, let me see, because she's with Garmin, and she, she loves Garmin, is the forward shooting sonar. Panoptics, you've heard me talk about it. You, you, you heard all about it on Bass Fan. It is unbelievable. That was a big deal. When I was on that trough spot, I was able to sit there, and when those fish would school, okay, they would come up school, and I could visibly see them. I'd cast my bait right to them, and a lot of times get bit, and then they would go down and not, not come up for 30 minutes. And I could take my panoptics, and I could shine around because it's a forward-shooting sonar. I could sit in one spot dead still and look 100 feet out, 150 feet out, and all of a sudden, boom, I'd see the bait. And then I'd see blobs beside the big balls of bait. And it would say it's 20 feet deep. And I could take that fish head and I could cast it out there. And again, count it down like I was telling you to do, right? 10 feet for every five seconds on that half ounce on 10 pound line. I'd count if it was 20 feet down, the fish were 20 feet down. I'd throw it out there, let it count to 10 and reel it back real slow. And I caught fish every single day doing that when they weren't schooling. The panoptics were huge. And it allowed me to also find a little bit of brush that was in that area. And then I could throw a big 10-inch worm over there and get a few bites. So the panoptics, it was a huge player. Uh, matter of fact, Ramey Colson, second place Ramey, uh, had, to, had, had a great, great tournament. He caught all his fish because of panoptics, fishing those brush piles. So very, very good. What's up, Cody? I appreciate you. Cody Durrance, man, he loves fishing. Uh, Bob's Machine Shop, New Pro Products. What's up, guys? The New Pro Products are awesome. Check them out. That's the Live Wool event. You've heard me talk all about it. Very, very good stuff. So, anyways, yeah, we might do one from the house here soon. But if I went in my house right now and showed you our house, which is pretty clean, my wife would kill me. I'd be sleeping on the couch tonight if I brought you, all of y'all in my house without previous or prior approval. I'd be in trouble. And I don't want to sleep on the couch. I just got here. So anyways, we'll do one. Appreciate you very much, guys. Thanks so much. Share it. Let everybody know what we're doing. And we are out of here.